Well, ladies and gentlemen, I think, um, as I said in the ring, we should be celebrating one of the greatest fights, one of the greatest comebacks I think we've ever seen. Everybody's thoughts with Michael Condon, I have heard that he's conscious and stable in hospital, so we'll wait for further updates, but just the most incredible fight, unbelievable act of bravery from Lee Wood to see through the first round, the, the second round, the, the middle storm come back in the fight and just such a clinical knockout at the end, um, which, you know, many of us didn't even see coming. I said to Ben and I think shouted at Lee, you've got to knock him out to win this fight. It was the only way he was going to win the fight. Um, and he did it. And it was just incredible, incredible. Michael Conlon was brilliant. Lee Wood was brilliant. The atmosphere was brilliant. And like I said, hopefully Michael Conlon's okay and we can enjoy what was just an incredible night. Over to the floor for questions. Lee, just um, probably uh, could have had a bush start really just with a knockdown in the first round, but you seem to split by bit to kind of gain a foothold with the fourth round's a big moment. You get a one that round and that sort of game in the first. I can't remember. I thought, <laughs> you started really, really well. I and thought, with the, the game second. plan, I started, I started well with what we worked on <clears throat> and um, I got dominated to the end of the top. He saw me to the body, saw me to the body, switched it up and I parried too big. And um, at the end of the fight, I said, yeah, just a flash knockdown. I got shot up on the floor, all right. But he said, no, your red fight's off the floor. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, I thought it was just a flash knockdown. But um, Michael's so tough and I hope it's all right, you know. Did you know actually in the last round you probably knew it would knock out the win? I just saw the cards. Um, I knew it was close, yeah. I knew I had to, I had to really hit him. That's why I knew. Um, that's two fights in a row, 12 round knockout. So you're, you're definitely a good finisher. Yeah, um, as Ben says, you know, I'm, I'm one of the biggest punches in the division um, for the week. But yeah, um, great to finally talk to you about it. Big, big first half there. Congratulations on top of you. You've seen one of the best fights probably ever. Many of us have seen this room. I think you deserve an incredible amount of credit. Um, you've caught you with a lot of body shots in there. How much did that take out of you? Did it look like obviously you were down low because you kept on a is there a concern there that you know you felt like you were getting to one of the balls or something? No, um, I'm a tough kid, but um, we knew Michael was a big body puncher. I mean, he was a very good body puncher. Um, I think the time I spent at the Ingle Gym for over 10 years, body spot on every single day, I managed to suck them up and carry on cracking on. But he did hurt me with about eight body shots that really took the wind out of me. And I caught him in body, I caught him in body shot one round. And I thought, bang, that's definitely it. He, he wins and he, he threw a combination back. So. He's a tough kid as well. Question just to Ben. Um, ben, how proud are you of Lee for coming through a lot of adversity? And it's been a huge moment for him. A lot of pressure fighting his home city, and you've mentioned pressure all the time. Mm. But he proved that he's got unbelievable heart. My jacket. Yeah, I was never worried about the pressure. I knew he'd deal with the pressure. He's, uh, he's a very cool, calm, collected guy. But one thing, one thing for me, Take boxing aside, he's one of the best human beings I've ever met. And I said going into this that every blood, sweat and tear that both guys have shed in their sporting careers and in their life led to this moment. And trust me when I say it, and I've worked with a lot of good qualifiers, he deserves he deserves this. Question for Eddie, off the back of that performance, what next for Lee Wood? I mean Obviously, once we find out that, that Michael's OK, we can start planning the future. You've got a huge fight coming up. Kiko Martinez uh, against Josh Warrington um, will be another similar atmosphere to, to this tonight. It looks like, you know, how the WBA have allowed Leo Santa Cruz to have what is nearly, I think, three years without boxing at 126 pounds is ridiculous. But you know what? We'll, but, yeah. but you know what? We'll fight Leo Santa Cruz as well. That's a great fight. For, for Lee Wood, you know, that's a city, I mean, he's, he's city ground stuff now, you know, and the thing is about the Kiko Martinez fight, Kiko Martinez, if he wins, you do the fight at the city ground, if Josh Warrington wins, there's an argument whether we go city ground or Ellen Road, but you know what, it's a nice, it's a nice argument to have, it's a nice argument to have, and uh, when he was walking down there to the ring, I, I said to him, this is just like Carl Froch against Butte, and it was, I said to Carl Froch that night, if you lose tonight, mate, this boat, he's going to take everything you got. And I said to Lee as well, this is just the beginning for you. You've just got to believe in yourself and go and win this fight. And, you know, but to do it like that in the 12th round, you know, I mean, I, I wish that, you know, Michael would have got up and we could have been celebrating like an all-game man. But that, that will come. But it was just the most dramatic, dramatic fight I've ever seen. And, and 
it just shows you two things in boxing. You know, one, never give up, because even though many thought that he was spent, he still got great power in both hands. And two, never switch off. Like, you know, Michael Connor, I thought Michael Connor was brilliant. I thought he boxed a brilliant fight. And just, you know, the pressure, everything, you know, the knockdown in the 11th, was it, wasn't it, it doesn't really matter, but just things started to change a little bit, you know, and, and um, I have to be honest, you know, I was screaming at him at the start of the 12th saying, you must knock him out to win, but I never really see that coming. You know, I, I would love to have, you know, I dreamed of that coming, but if you ask me honestly, can he do it? I, I would, I, you know, I have my doubts because he went through so much in the fight and you see fighters lose their power when they've taken so much punishment in a fight. That was what was so spectacular about the knockout. He went down in the first round, he was out, out. Got up, he was lucky the bell came. He, he somehow survived the second and third. But to, to still carry that power in the 12th round shows you how, how, how strong a puncher is, but as well shows you how well conditioned he was. Because you don't get up from knockdowns like that and knock someone out in the 12th round if you haven't done your conditioning right. So well done to Ben and all the guys. I thought it was tight and I thought I needed to hurt him and run around, convince him maybe a knockdown. Um, hard, I was just in the zone, you know. Um, it's hard to say. But I just gave everything. And like I said in the build up, you know, I ain't got to quit him there. Whether it's round one, round two, not, not for one second. Recently, yes, for Brian Lee, nobody's seen the other Tenth round. Was there anything you said between the start of the Tenth round and the pressure on? I go on the bit of the tension starting to see it. Seems to be about halfway through the tenth round. Not, not really. Like, obviously, I'm a strong finisher. Um, Lee's banged away at his body the whole fight as well. I know Mick was banging away back at the body, but that was part of we wanted to bang away at Mick's body to, to slow him down the second half of the fight. He is one tough dude. Very tough. Con. Like, some of those Very shots were ridiculous. And not only did he go into his show and survive, he fired back, fought back, like one tough man. But they did start to take their toll and created moments for, for Lee in the later parts of the fight, as you mentioned earlier. Yeah, Dave, we don't have uh, the potential of the warranting. Uh, we keep going on a few weeks later. Would it be a rematch? We'll probably be able to get done. I don't know, we'll, we'll have to see, like, you know, at the moment, let's just hope he's okay um, before we start talking about rematches and stuff like that. It was, from an atmosphere perspective, one of the most incredible atmospheres I've ever seen. Irish fans, amazing. Lee's fans, you know, the city's been waiting for a fight night like that for a long time. And, you know, like 10 years ago, we had Carl Froch against Lucien Butte, and that was, that was one-sided, but it was very, very dramatic. And that was, it felt like, you know, but that was even, that was off the charts, off the charts. Question for Eddie. Eddie, you know Nottingham is a fighting city and you've seen the atmosphere here tonight. How realistic is City Ground? So if Lee Wood fights in Nottingham again, it will only be at the City Ground. Yes. Because, yes. you know, that, that's, that's been his dream. That's, that's been his dream for a long time. And I, I promised him, I said, if you win this fight, we're going to the City Ground. Listen, if it's Vegas for Santa Cruz or whatever it is, we'll see. But, you know, for a long time, Lee Wood has been scrimping around, right, for no money in the sport, boxing for no money on the road. And the last, you know, couple of the year or so, he started making money, made a lot of money tonight, and he's going to make a load of money in the next, in the next fight. And he's dedicated his whole life to the sport. Yeah. You, saw, you see what he went through tonight. You know, he deserves everything he gets from here. And, uh, you know, we'll make sure it's a, it's a massive fight wherever it is. Very emotional. Um, I had to shed a few tears actually. Hold on, Lee. Good, Lee. Been away from my kids, like it's hard, but um, it's worth it, you know. Yeah, I knew um, what I was prepared to go through to win that fight uh, against Kanzu. 
I was literally prepared to walk through fire, so um, I knew Mick would be the same. So I knew, like I said before, if he was given 50, I'd give 59. If he give 89, I'd give 19. And whatever he was prepared to give, I had to give one, but I had to dig deep. I knew there'd be times in this fight, which I'll get a good check. And um, I've already had it before in other fights. I knew it was there, I just got to stay mentally strong. Even in the preparation for this fight, you know, I went through quite a lot. Um, <clears throat> when the fight got announced, I couldn't even throw my right hand. I, it was a bit early from the operation. I could have done with a bit more time. But um, yeah, I mean, obviously I don't want to excuses because I won, but preparation could have been better. I'm the first spot, I must have caught and <laughs> a few, a few yeah. bits and bobs happened. But like any camp, you know, you, you come across hurdles. But it's just like the fight, you know, you, you come across adversity. And I've been through it in the camp. I've been through it in other fights. And I had that experience on the night. And I don't think um, Mick Adam, that might be the difference. A lot of people here tonight, Jake, and people who've been back in you four years through the tough times, because it's in Nottingham, and you, you talk about wanting to fight in Nottingham, so what did that mean to have that support? Massive, you know, um, a small percentage of them um, would have been at my debut at Clifton Edge, and a very small percentage of them. Yesterday, there's more people in my way than there was my professional debut. <laughs> um, but, you know, they've been following me for, for years, and um, they went to Hull when I got beat for the British title. And I was devastated. I was literally devastated for weeks. In fact, Jordan, Jordan Gill actually stayed in there. It's over that night to have me on suicide watch. <laughs> um, no, it's been some journey to get to be off. And um, I, won't, I won't be prepared to, to curl over at all for one bit. And um, you know, some massive fights ahead. It's not over yet. I said that before the fight. This isn't this is my peak. This isn't where I finish. I've got some big fights ahead. Um, <clears throat> the game plan would have made that fight a lot easier <laughs> but um, you know I struggled because Mick's a very good fighter he's a two time Olympian so skill wise you know it was hard for me to get my head around he came out south boys and I need, I need to work on that a lot but um, emotion wise you know I, I felt like I hold it together and I, and I kept with the, the game plan majority of the time you know he, Ben said don't chase his head early don't chase his head early and um I chip away the body, chip away the body, and I think that's what won the fight in the end over the rounds. How did you feel when you saw what happened with Michael again? Devastating, devastating. Um, I just hope he's all right. I've heard he's, he's up and he's talking, so I'd like to see him, make sure he's all right. But it's, it's hard to celebrate when um, you know we finish like that. Then, uh, I think going into that 12th round after the, the, the knockdown off slip, did your advice to the change based on yeah, I think it was going into the 11th, I looked at Eddie and said, what you got? And he said, uh, need a knockout. And I said to Lee that I knew that, listen, Mick's a tough game lad. And I knew that he was going to come out and fight for his life and let his hands go early on because he wanted that title. And it was, you know, we didn't really know. It wasn't clear cut, especially with a knockdown in the 11th. Who was ahead? So I knew he was going to come out and let his hands go. I said to Lee, punch with him, time him. When you get into a clinch, walk him back to the ropes. Once you get there, occupy him up top, back downstairs, and then switch it up, switch the attack up top, and eventually found the shot. Um, but listen, game plans, this, that, and the other. Yes, fantastic, brilliant job, both sides. But wow, like what both guys gave, showed. Do you know what stands out for me more than anything? Not once did either of them look like. Once did either of them quit and even cross their minds, either of them, in a fight like that. But once. It was as the fight went on, past seven, eight, it was the closing 30 seconds of every round. They were just trading up in the middle of the ring for, for you know, and it was just like, and I was thinking with the body shots Lee was landing, I was thinking, surely. It's going to take his toll at some Yeah, time. and it, it was actually one round, I think it was the eighth or ninth, he looked, started to look tired, but you look, but then in the next round, you look like you'd done your beans in the round before. And I thought, oh no, we have, he hasn't about, got enough left, you know. About, but I think throughout the fight, he caught me about eight body shots, <laughs> took the wind out of me. And I, I just, I looked at him and went, it is gone, it is gone, so what? Like, I'm still standing, but um, it does take its toll. Mm. <laughs> but I caught, I caught him back with him, so um, yeah, Michael's so tough, mm. so tough. You know, they make hands gloves. Yeah, yeah. He's such a tough kid, but um, Pops a great fight. Guys, couple, couple more, because I think we need to... Is it hard for you, like Eddie's touching this, just to enjoy the win when Michael's... Gone? Yeah, I just want to talk to him first, see if he's all right. Um, he's all right, yeah. Eddie, Michael fell right in front of you, and you were next to his mm. family. It looked very ugly when it happened. Yeah. You know, scenes like that aren't good for the sport, are they? Scenes like that just 
a part of the sport, unfortunately. Um, it's not that they're not good for the sport. We, everyone knows, everyone's been around boxing <coughs> for years and years, seen it. You know, I've seen terrible things happen in that same seat. Um, and it's hard because, my, uh, you know, I was sitting there, Jamie Conlon was on my left, his dad was on his left, and the whole fight we were back and forwards, you know, and he was goading me and I was goading him. And, you know, and in the 11th, I said, you know, I think, you know, we got him here, we got him here. And, and no one likes to see the fight end like that, you know, and um, he, was, he was unconscious standing up. You know, he got hit by the right hand and he was, he was out and, and sat, sagged through the ropes. The guys caught him on the way down and, you know, the fight was over before he left the ring, but obviously he, he weren't... Credit to he, the medical team. Yeah, staff. yeah. Um, they were brilliant. He, he wanted, eventually he wanted to get up, to be fair to him, he wanted to take, but they wanted to make sure they could administer oxygen. Did it catch him again? No, not, I mean, he, he, was unco- he was out on coming through the ropes and they caught him on the way down, whether he bumped his back or... But I, I don't believe that... He, uh, he had a significant fall on the way down. I think he was, hopefully, he was more cushioned, but he was... Um, I haven't seen the replay because we're not airing it till we find that he's... I'm sure some people are, but from the pictures I've seen, you can see he's out standing up and Lee turned and celebrated. And I think Steve Gray was stopping the fight, but when he went through the ropes, he knew 20 seconds he had to get back in the ring, which he was, you know, he could have had... 20 minutes and he might not have got back in the ring so just hope he's okay I just want to ask your thoughts on Gary Collins great performance you know no one really does that to Miguel Vasquez and, and for a lot of these guys Kevin Agiarco as well it's a, it's a crazy experience for him I mean even Lee Lee's never boxed on a, on a stage like that before you know he won the world title in our back garden you know, he's, he's, had some, he's boxed on some big shows, but it's true. It's true, isn't it? It's true. But I said to him back there, before he went through, I went, hard, I said, go and do, you know, I said, this is your time. I said, but most of all, soak it up up there. And you really did. You was up there for about five minutes before you decided to walk, you know, but that's part and parcel. This is what you, I said, this is what you dreamed of your whole life. You know, like he said, when he was in Hull and got stopped by Gavin McDonald, you honestly think, you think it'd be headlining at night in a marina in front of 9,000 defending his world title. No chance. It's a Cinderella story. So, guys, on that note, we need to get out of here, all right? So thank you very much. Well done, everyone.